Hey guys, we're back, and today we're um, we have a 2008 Jeep Wrangler with a V6 engine, and uh, car came in for. Uh, A chicken light on, uh, it's flashing actually. Customer brought me these parts. It looks like he already replaced an ignition coil. And I don't know what else is in here. Wires, plugs. He tried to fix it himself, but uh, uh, he just couldn't figure it out what was going on with it, so he decided to bring it over to me. Um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna see why the car is misfiring. I know that a lot of people out there, you know, they they want to fix their cars in their own and sometimes DIYs they're not willing to spend this much money on tools because they're not cheap so let's get started right here we have our scan tool um, in this video I'm gonna be using my Autel IM608. It's an amazing machine. I'm just, I've been using a lot of machines over the year, and this thing here is just on top. Big names, you know, like Snap on OTC. This machine will literally run, run circles around those machines, those tools. I mean, the Snap on one, as far as I know. The newest one they have, it's over ten thousand dollars, and that is a ridiculous amount of money. So, but anyways, we need a scan tool. Of course, you guys don't have to use something like this. You can just buy a a code reader from AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Amazon. They sell them too. This is just a basic code reader, okay? And sometimes this is pretty much all you need if you don't want to spend big bucks on fancy machines if you can afford something like this go ahead and and get it and this machine though it's it's very good and let's move on so to diagnose a car nowadays basically you need you need basic tools okay if you if you don't have something like this you still may need basic tools in this case, you need a meter or bulb meter, spark tester, okay, um, and sometimes you will also need something like this. These are um, noise lights. So this is just a basic setup, okay, and then you're gonna need uh, this type of. Uh, tool and this is just a 20 piece uh, electrical back probe kit and it's, uh, it's not very expensive it's made by ATD tools I think I bought it off of eBay when you're testing for um, you know uh, back probing wires uh, either at the PCM side the module side or the component side this is so useful so you gotta have one of those Let's uh, hook our scan tool up and see what what is going on with the, with this truck. I also recommend you getting one of these. And this is just a simple, old-fashioned um, libel tester. So let's go ahead and hook our machine up into the car, and we're gonna see what's going on. 
why is it shaking? Okay. We're gonna get into this truck. Make sure it's in neutral. It is. Secondary circuit. Okay. All right. Let's um. Let's back out of there, and let's go into misfire data. All right. So here we have cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have cylinder number two and number five misfiring. The rest is fine. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and shut our engine down because we don't want to destroy or have too much fuel being injected into those two pistons that are now burning up raw fuel we may ruin our catalytics if the customer hasn't done so already okay uh, I already set up my connection here uh, these are the extra pieces that you get with that tool set that I told you about or the, the one that I was talking about made by ATD uh, so we're gonna test uh, our coil I already set it up just to save some time but I'm gonna show you here of course you also need uh, some sort of uh, information this one. Uh, let's see. We already selected our vehicle. Yes. Okay. So let's go into diagrams. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we have engine control module. Okay. So now we're gonna look for our coil ignition uh, wiring where is it? oh it's right here we'll click on that alright I don't know if you guys can see it but um, we have our injector layout or harness layout and then here we have our PCM yes that's our PCM uh, here's our ignition coil so this is very simple you know just coil pack 
Uh, some cars they have uh, coiled per cylinder, so it's a little, a little bit more complex. But this is simple. This is just a coil pack, which means you know we have our. Uh, this is our uh, power supply from our uh, auto shutdown relay, and here are the three wires from the PCM to ground the primary circuit for the ignition coil. So we have coil control one, coil con coil two control, and coil three control. Uh, as far as I remember, coil two control or ignition coil number two was the one misfiring. Okay. Um, so we're gonna test for um, we're gonna see actually if the PCM is grounding because the PCM provides ground through these wires three wires to the coil so this is power fit and the other side is ground so our PCM is supposed to send a ground signal through the each wire to fire the uh, uh, ignition coil to um, get the spark to the spark plug. Pull this ignition wire, okay, and check for spark. And for that, we're gonna use our spark tester. Set this thing right here. And we're gonna fire our engine again. Fire it up and see what happens. piston number four so we know that piston number two and number five are not uh, firing so at least we know that piston number four is getting spark or uh, spark has been delivered to it good now let's shut it down again and we'll go with the bad one. And that one was... Piston number two and five. So, let me just remove this thing back again. Okay, now, let's put this thing in here. It's better if you test an ignition system with the engine shut down because you don't want to you don't want to get shock you know it's like 30 50 thousand volts running through this cable here so be careful you don't want to you don't want to feel it I I'm warning you <laughs> it's not very pleasant okay so now that we have it hooked up into number two now the reason why I'm saying is this is number two is because there's some numbers stamped into the coil the top one is two and five so middle one is one and four and the bottom one uh, the two towers on the bottom are six and three so let's go ahead and check for spark see if we got spark at piece of number two okay yeah no spark dead all right so we could probably go and use a lab scope you know 
just to check and see if we have signal coming out of these wires here or ground from the PCM through the wires but like I said uh, you can diagnose a car properly without fancy tools at least when it comes to these kind of things so here we have our uh, libel tester and this one here should be our test point okay you guys see it PCM is grounding uh, the one of the wires for the our ignition coil and uh, if I'm not wrong let me see color uh, dark blue orange let's go ahead and check our uh, wiring diagram dark blue orange that's our uh, coil 3 control okay coil 2 control and coil 1 control we got to test those at least we know coil 3 control it's good because we can see our test light flashing that means the PCM is grounding the is sending the ground out into the coil so it's good Let's jump into our next um, wire, which is our red wires, and that one should be our uh, coil two control. Oh, yeah, this one is not good. Yeah, there's no ground. Present. Let's go with our um, last one. Um, and let's see if we got signal. Oh, wrong. This one here. Yeah. So that's why our Jeep is running poorly and that's why he's uh, misfiring we have a problem with the uh, our PCM um, it's not grounding this wire here which is dark blue 10 that's the one for coil 2 control and coil 2 control it's for piston number 2 and 5 yeah okay now there's one last step and we want to make sure that we don't skip that one and you guys you guys guess which one is it which uh, should be our next step because we don't want to blame the PCM yet we don't know whether the PCM is the issue here yeah let's not uh, judge our PCM because there's one thing that could go wrong and cause the same issue well if you know if we got a broken wire from PCM connector to the ignition coil connector uh, that could also cause a, a no spark condition although I'm testing on the PCM side you know which you know it's basically the terminal inside the connector is touching the pin on the PCM side um, but you know what just to make sure 
that we're doing the right thing here. I'm just gonna check continuity from our um, PCM connector side. We're gonna check continuity from the connector side on the PCM to the ignition coil side. And for that, you can do it with this tester or you can do it with a multimeter. So we're gonna use it. We're gonna check for continuity. Just to make sure that we don't know. Replace something that we're not supposed to. Okay, so let's uh, remove our test uh, lid and pop our connector. And according to the diagram, is uh, number seven. The wire located in our connector at number seven. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah should be blue blue orange we're gonna check continuity like I said I already tested um, or back probe our connector at the PCM side so really not very likely that uh, we have a broken wire but just to be safe let's go ahead and do it uh, coil side there and we're gonna look for our wire our dark blue orange wire I don't know if you guys can see it Oops. yeah it's the one on the bottom Okay, so let's go ahead and put our test lead. These are so handy, man. I like them. Okay, be careful not to push the tape into the terminal too hard because you may damage the terminal so be careful on that okay we have our meter set into continuity yes and let's go ahead and try and find our wire so it was number seven starting from here so one one two three four five six seven so this one here should be our test point okay so there you go nothing wrong with our uh, harness at least for the coil control number two it's good so yes we have a bad PCM uh, more than likely the driver for the uh, for coil control number or coil number two which is piston number two and five is not ground is not it's not present so we have an in, uh, an internal issue with this PCM We're gonna have to order another one from uh, Chrysler. Uh, you can probably get it out of the Riking Yard used. Uh, uh, I've replaced those before, but in this case, there's none whatsoever. I check, uh, I'm on the you know, on the west coast and there's not a single one of these 
within a thousand mile range nothing so we're gonna have to get it from uh, the dealer now the thing is that when you guys buy PCMs from the dealer uh, sometimes they don't have software you gotta download the software once you install the PCM keep that in mind because even if you can find out what is wrong with your car when it comes to replacing modules on these newer cars uh, sometimes it's not just plug and play there's a lot more involved but yeah we found the problem bad PCM all right guys so I got a phone call this morning from my local Dodge dealer or Chrysler um, here is our brand new remanufacturer PCM based on the VIN this is the part number The serial number made by or remanufactured by Continental so yeah we have our PCM but there's no software we have to do the calibration and that's where you're gonna need this This is our Micropod 2. Uh, this is what the dealer uses. I know you can use a like a universal um, pass through device. In fact, I know that Autel makes one and I have a two it's called the maxi flash the J2534 um, I did some digging and yes Chrysler allows you to use a pass-through device to flash PCMs um, you're just gonna have to um, take a snapshot of the serial number of that pass through device and register the tool with white tech uh, but in the, I purchased this micropod like a year ago and I I've, I've never used it this is the first time that I'm actually gonna use it um, sure don't want to show you this sticker right here because that's um, the serial number from the tool so no, I cannot show you that but anyways if you guys are gonna flash a PCM for any Chrysler vehicle you need a micropod or a uh, uh, VCI kind of like the one I just show you and then you need a uh, computer in this case I'm not using a you know an office or like a laptop but this is just a tablet and it has a uh, I think it's Windows 10 professional install and uh, you have to set up a couple of accounts with a uh, Chrysler uh, Tech Authority it's the name of one of them the other one is the white tech application and then you gotta pay for the file um, if I'm not wrong it's like $50 license fee you could buy it yearly but if you're just gonna use it you know your microphone you're not gonna use it every day 
unless you're a dealer. I know you're going to use it every day, but if you're just an independent like me, um, you're not going to use it every day. So it's not it's not worth it spending sixteen hundred dollars for a yearly subscription if you're going to planning on using this thing a couple of times a year, like me. Um, I know more cars are coming in, newer cars are going to break down, and in the future I know I'm going to use it quite often, but as of now, not really. Um, and just so you guys have an idea, um, you got to pay, like I said, $50 for the three-day subscription or sixteen hundred dollars for a yearly subscription and then on top of that you gotta pay for the flash file and that's another thirty seven thirty eight dollars or so um, and once you pay for that you still gotta go to tech authority and buy a token because without the token there's no way you can down, download the flash file or download the software into the module I know it's crazy it's a headache and it's just money pouring money to fix a car but that's the way it is nowadays every single car maker is charging you a fee to use their tool or if you need to use uh, flash files or download flash calibrations to any module that's how it is um, I will be flashing this PCM uh, so stay tuned guys we're gonna replace it PCM with a new one from my local Chrysler dealer so I'm gonna do it in real time and swap this module make sure my ignition is off it is so I gotta reprogram this module because uh, There was a flash update or a calibration update and I already did that but I'm hoping that will probably fix the misfire but it seems that it's not really a software issue but rather hardware issue. I think the drivers for the ignition coil, ignition coil for the piston number two and five that uh, the driver is uh, for some reason is not grinding the primary circuit for the ignition coil and it's not Basically, the piston number two and five are dead. Um, so we're gonna swap the PCM. This is a PCM from Chrysler. And of course, I got a new one from Chrysler. But as you guys know, it's not, there's no software on it, it's just empty. So now that I am a little relaxed, not too many customers coming in. I decided to share with YouTube 
uh, what I'm actually doing it to this car. We're gonna replace the PCM. Hopefully. That'll take care of that uh, misfire problem. Oh, come on. Why is this thing not going in? Hope. Hope I'm not plugging in the wrong connector. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. It's a right connector. Why the heck is not? It's not gonna push in the connector. There you go. Damn, it's hard. Okay. Oops. As far as I know, there was a ground here not too long ago. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Better put that ground in there. Ah, oh, sorry. Doing with swapping this module with one hand. The other is holding the cell phone so I can record. So let's go ahead and talk with these bad boys. A little bit, not too much. There you go. Okay, so now we're gonna turn our ignition on. Make sure that our micropod is on, it is. And let's go ahead and download the calibration for this car. Like I said, I already, those are our travel codes. multiple cylinder misfire okay so it's going to flash okay so now so reprogramming the controller I had to come all the way here my shop is actually all the way there by the trash can but since there's no Wi-Fi over there, I had to bring the car over here, bring my um, charger, my tablet, my micropod, so that I could, there's better Wi-Fi reception here, so that's crazy. There's no signal over there for some reason. We'll see. I hope my uh, battery doesn't die on me while doing that flash because that'll destroy that module. Come on. Hurry up. Takes a little while. We'll see if this fixes that misfire. It should. <laughs> Oops. Now that I've just noticed that the whole world is going to see my email address. I could probably blur it out or something. See if I can do. All right. Please 
says here, please turn the ignition key off. Okay, let's go ahead and turn our ignition off. There, it's off. Okay, continue. Please turn key on. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the key on. Okay, it's on. Okay. Click continue. ECU up to date. Successfully flash ECU from all power number. Okay. Okay, so sorry I had to shut my camera down. There was, for some reason, was it wasn't reading the or PCM wasn't communicating with the rest of the modules, so I had to go and shut the key off and then turn it back on. But anyhow, let's uh, write the V number one J. Four G A. Four G A. Five nine one. Five eight. L. Two zero eight three four. Let's double check our vein, make sure that we're not gonna screw everything up. One J four GA five nine one five eight L five two zero eight three four. Colvin is valid. Let's see if I can crank it and see if we got that misfire is gone now. Come on. Okay. Yup. The misfire is gone. Sweet. Okay, we're back. So, after all, I have replaced this bad boy. This is the old PCM. Um, looks like it's been updated already. Got this label here that means Chrysler changed the software for some reason. But yep, we got the new one in. Oh, and it's out. We use our micro pot. So, one last thing. Let's go ahead and see if we got rid of that misfire. So there's uh, some extra steps that you gotta do when you replace a PCM. You know, the typical bean writing, uh, odometer 
you gotta ride the odometer, the you know the current mileage on the odometer. Um, what else? Uh, do a throttle body relearn. I'll show you. Um, it looks like this uh, scan tool can do all that. Um, like uh, cam and crank relearn. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes you don't have to do it. Um, you gotta set the beam. Uh, learn the electronic throttle control. Gotta do a relearn on that. Um, sometimes you gotta program the or uh, write the keys because sometimes the new PCM will not recognize the key. But that's sometimes that's because you don't do the bean writing, or you gotta write the bean. Once you write the bean the the secret data from the scheme module will go into the the new PCM and that'll uh, allow it the you know the engine to start because if you don't ride the vein that's gonna immobilize the mo the, the engine basically the PCM is gonna immobilize it but once you do all that you should be good to go that's it guys hopefully you enjoyed this video Please, if you don't mind, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment if you got any questions regarding uh, cars and trucks. And if I'm of any help, let me know. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one.